the year is 1894 in Battle Creek, Michigan. W.K. Kellogg, brother to questionable historical figure John Harvey Kellogg, has just unknowingly invented something so timeless, so universal, that will become a lasting staple of American breakfast for decades to come. The humble cornflake. Simple to prepare and perfect for a new generation of American busybodies, cornflakes, along with Kellogg's other popular cereal brands, have become a major part of American popular culture. However, this story isn't about Kellogg's successes. It's about a failed museum that opened in 1998 and closed in 2007. It's about a factory tour without the factory, a roadside attraction built around hollow nostalgia. This is the story of Cereal City, USA. Cornflakes are for young and old. Kids are excited, older people are excited, everyone's excited about cornflakes. I've never seen a person that did like cornflakes. Everyone loves cornflakes. From early on in Kellogg's history, cereal fans visiting Battle Creek were able to tour their production facility to see how cereal was made up close and personal. Now our tour will taste the flakes before they are roasted. Thousands of people flocked to Battle Creek, creating a booming tourism market in the area. However, as the 80s approached, fears of corporate espionage from Kellogg's biggest competitor and next-door neighbor, Post Cereal, began to rise. This, coupled with changing health regulations, caused the factory tour to close down in 1986 seemingly for good. It wouldn't be until 1998 when Cereal City USA would arrive on the scene, a $22 million, 45,000 square foot tourism destination. Battle Creek is the home to the hottest family fun spot. It's Kellogg Cereal City USA. So, come grab the whole family and have a bowl full of fun. You'll see how cereal is made from peel to flake. Explore, jump, climb, and play. Get interactive and go back in time at the most unique new attraction in the Midwest. So, come on, get to the all-new Kellogg Cereal City USA. Not quite a museum, not quite a theme park. The two-story building was built to look like an industrial warehouse and adorned with Kellogg's most popular mascots. Its mission statement was to be a historical facility that conveys the development, growth, and global impact of the cereal industry in a fun, entertaining, and interactive manner. And we have Cereal City now. This is a new operation. I yes, mean, this it is. is uh, it's only been an operation how long? When did your grand opening? We opened June 1st of mm -hmm. this year to the public. And really, it's been kind of sad. The, the factory tours of the Kellogg Company closed yes. in 1986. So it's been quite a while since anybody's been able to come and see this production line and see how cereal made um, and, and really the first time ever to really learn the entire cereal story because we've got so much to offer here that tells that. And it is such a story to tell because Battle Creek has heritage all its own as far as cereal production and whatnot. Absolutely. So many people are synonymous when you think of Battle Creek. You think of cereal. Yes, they say it's the mo well, most well-known city of its size in the <laughs> world. On the first floor was the factory store, the largest outlet for Kellogg's themed merchandise in the world, as well as the Bijou Theater, which featured a show called The Best to You Review. It's a really good introduction to the whole facility. It tells the whole serial story, and it does it on these two huge screens here. Um, there's the television, and then this one actually, when it's all lit up, looks like a window pane. And that's where Sweetheart of the Corn comes out, and oh. Sunny, and they kind of tell the whole story. As well as Dr. Kellogg and W.K. Kellogg who come out and kind of tell their little side of things here. It's just kind of a multimedia, yeah. audio, animatronic oh, type of yeah. thing. The first floor also had a couple of dining options. The Red Onion Grill served chicken tenders, burgers, french fries, and other American theme park staples. There was also an ice cream parlor named Sullivan's, where guests could get ice cream sundaes topped with Fruit Loops or Rice Krispies. These treats had originally been offered on the old factory tour. On the second floor, there were several theaters showing educational videos. There was also a photo op where guests could get their face put on a box of Frosted Flakes, and a playground for younger children with oversized milk cartons and other foods. Lastly was the Kellogg's Corn Flakes cereal production line, a walkthrough attraction where guests embarked on a self-guided tour through a simulated Kellogg's Corn Flakes factory. This tour was a far cry from the original, featuring an abrasive cornflake mascot as a guide in place of the highly charismatic human tour guides of the past. The tour was short, impersonal, and above all, didn't show the actual production of cereal. You could still get the paper hat, 
you could still get the warm cornflakes, but they were simply put through a heater to simulate their out-of-the-oven freshness. It was all fabricated and fake. Disappointing to locals and underwhelming to tourists, feedback was almost immediately negative. Tourism review website Roadside America said it best in their article about the facility. Kellogg's Cereal City USA is a faint echo of a lost time, an attraction geared to getting Americans used to the idea of not seeing things being made. The production line was Kellogg's way of rekindling interest in their brand, but they quickly discovered that tourists, especially in the United States, weren't looking for simulations. Also, in the decade following the last factory tour, other local production facilities had stepped in to fill the void. This left Serial City USA in a tough spot, competing with other museums, other theme parks, and other factories. About an hour to the east, in Chelsea, Michigan, lies the Jiffy Mix factory, a company well known in the Midwest for their pre-made cornbread mix. Jiffy still offers free factory tours of their production line, and it has become a seasonal school trip destination. As more and more companies pull their production out of Michigan or out of the country entirely, the Jiffy factory remains rooted in the community. Its connection to the city of Chelsea isn't just a thing of the past, and it's not just a part of their history to be remembered in a museum. It's a present-day way of life. Just some food for thought. Serial City USA was originally expected to draw in 400,000 visitors per year. It only managed an average of 86,000. In order to remain financially viable, the museum had to bring in at least 100,000 visitors a year, and as the 2000s arrived, it became more and more apparent that it simply could not. Serial City USA had very little for guests to do, especially for families with older children, and the attraction didn't have enough draw to entice tourists from outside of Michigan to make the trip. In 2006, guest totals dipped even lower to 75,000, and in January of 2007, Serial City USA was closed for good. Nowadays, Serial City USA is all but forgotten. Very little footage and information exists online to document its quiet existence. Kellogg's bought the building outright from the city of Battle Creek, stripped all of their branding from it, and eventually donated it to the Battle Creek Public School System in 2011. It still stands today. First at 6 o'clock, Battle Creek is known as the serial capital of the world, but now the city might be losing some of its Kellogg employees. 24-hour news hates Brady Gillum joins us live from Battle Creek. And Brady, how many workers are we talking about that could lose their jobs? Well, Brian and Sue, down the line, about 200 people could wind up losing their jobs here at Kellogg. The city of Battle Creek finds itself at a crossroads, with Kellogg's outsourcing more and more of its production and post serials having left the city years ago. Battle Creek is struggling with its image of being the serial city. Similar to how Detroit struggles with being the motor city, or how Grand Rapids was the furniture city, and Flint the vehicle city, these places put their entire identities in the hands of corporations, and when faced with the opportunity for higher profits, these corporations began turning their backs on the cities and communities that were once their home. <laughs> 